Hello again and welcome to another Warlord Wednesday. In today's episode, we shall be casting our ever critical eye over another bolt action unit. This time we have in our crosshairs one of the most famous German armoured cars from World War II. A very popular choice with the player base and a common sight on the tabletop. With its eight wheels and impressive anti-tank capability, I am of course talking about the SDKFZ 234-2, better known as the Puma Heavy Armoured Car. And so without further ado, let us take a look at the good, the bad and the ugly of this unit. As is tradition, let us begin with a brief rundown of the Puma's cost, weapons, damage value and special rules. As with many units in bot action, the Puma has a varying points cost depending on what veterans level you choose to take it at. At its lowest end, it will cost 128 points, but that is for an inexperienced one, which will have a lower leadership and will have an inbuilt minus one to hit modifier. Or you can go for a regular Puma, which is a bit more expensive, but has a decent leadership and no mass one to hit problems. And that costs 160 points. Finally, you can go for the Platinum Package, the Creme de la Creme option, and go for the Veteran Puma. This will cost you 192 points. Not only will this give it a fantastic leadership value of 10, but it will also allow the Puma to ignore any pins that will be caused by weapons that can't physically penetrate its armor. Whatever veterancy you decide to give the Puma, it's going to come down to how you are building your wider list. But personally, in most circumstances, I would recommend you go for a regular one. This is because you want to avoid the minus one to hit modifier of inexperience, but you're not going to get much out of the veterancy level due to the Puma's relatively light armor. Most shots that are going to target this will be able to penetrate it. Moving on to the weapons, the Puma comes as standard with one turret mounted medium anti-tank gun and a coaxial MMG. You have no weapon options, there is one fixed loadout and that is it. The damage value of the Puma is 8 plus and under the rules of bolt action this technically makes it a light tank. In comparison to a lot of other armored cars this is a pretty impressive damage value. Most armored vehicles that aren't full blown tanks have only got an armor value of 7 plus but the Puma well it's called a heavy armored car for a reason and it does get that quite tasty 8 plus damage value. However even though it's tough for an armored car it is important to remember that it's not tough by a lot of armor standards especially if you put it up to like a medium tank or even a heavy tank so don't start thinking this thing is invincible in the grand scheme of things when you look at all of the armor available in bot action this is still very much a light vehicle it's just tougher than a lot of its peer choices finally the puma has the special rule recce and it's got dual direction steering Recce is a reaction that the vehicle can do to being shot at. It's similar to an infantry unit that is choosing to go down to try and get that minus two to hit modifier. Except vehicles don't get a minus two to hit modifier when they go down. What Recce does is allow the vehicle to move when it is targeted for a shot. And if that move takes the vehicle out of line of sight, then the enemy's shot is wasted. Most recce vehicles, if they choose to reverse as part of the recce move, can only do so at an advance rate, so either 9 or 12 inches. But because the Puma has got dual direction steering, it can actually reverse at a run rate, making it very, very maneuverable. Now that covers the salient facts of the Puma as per the bolt action rules. But now let us lift up the rock and have a good look underneath. Let's deep dive into this unit and take a look at some of its positives and some of its negatives. In my opinion, one of the strongest things about the Puma is it allows you, as a German player, to get proper armor saturation on the table. If you take this thing and also take a light Panzer III with a medium anti-tank gun, 
Both of those units combined are going to cost just over 300 points. That leaves you with loads of points left over in your standard 1,000 or 1250 point game that you can spend on the other parts of your list and you're not having to cut any corners you can still get plenty of infantry in there and you'll be able to afford mortars and artillery for high explosives but you're going to have two good armored vehicles on the table whereas most of your opponents are either going to have two lighter vehicles than that going for those sort of seven plus armor spam or they're going to have one slightly heavy vehicle but either way you're either going to have more better armor than them or you're just going to have more armor than them for a lot of players this is going to be quite a lot to handle especially when you consider that many people use their tanks as their main source of at and if you've got two tanks then you can be in two places at once but if they've only got one let's say sherman or t-34 that might be able to get into a duel with the puma or the panzer III but it won't be able to deal with both at the same time. And either they can gang up on it, or one can keep it busy whilst the other one runs amok and starts putting a lot of pressure on those other units in the enemy army that might not have any AT capability or not enough to deal with an armor eight plus vehicle. But speaking of anti-tank, the Puma's medium anti-tank gun is a big deal. Most light vehicles come with a light AT gun or an auto cannon or some machine guns but this thing comes with a full-blown medium anti-tank gun giving it the capability to actually get into fights with other vehicles enemy transports even armored ones like half tracks are not going to like the sight of a puma coming down at them picking them off one at a time and even other enemy vehicles up to and including enemy medium armor are not going to feel very happy about a puma starting to sling those medium at shells into the front or side of them on top of this by taking the puma you're not relying on infantry based at which often has a pretty serious achilles heel you take a panzer shrek well sure it's got good penetration but it's only got a 24 inch range that's relatively short and a good tank well commanded might never give you the opportunity to get that Panzer Shrek into range. Or you go for something like a medium AT team, which does have the range, but is static and is therefore susceptible to things like mortars and other artillery that can dial in on it. The Puma might be a little bit more expensive than both those options, but it can keep moving, keep hitting, and will often be in range. I mentioned earlier that the Puma was a highly maneuverable vehicle and I want to dig into that a little bit more, especially when paired with another vehicle like the aforementioned Panzer III, the Puma being wheeled, being able to go 12 inches, being able to have those two turns means that whilst one tank can take the enemy vehicle head on, the Puma can move around the side and get those side shots. It will be quite difficult, although not impossible, for an opponent to make sure that the front armor is facing against both vehicles when they're going after his tank. However, it's not all good news for the Puma. It does have one very big drawback. You may have noticed that most of the virtues of the Puma have been about its ability to engage other enemy vehicles. But, all action, fundamentally, is an infantryman's game. Infantry are gonna score points, infantry are gonna help you win the scenario. And the Puma struggles against infantry. It only has a coaxial MMG. Unlike something like uh, Panzer III or Panzer IV, which often will come with a turret, a coaxial MMG, and a hull MMG, the Puma doesn't have that. And so, it does feel like it can be a very, very expensive anti-infantry option if it's going to spend most of the game driving around, hosing down infantry with its lone MMG. Considering it costs five points more than a Panzer III, which gets the medium AT gun and also gets the two MGs and the same armor value, it, unless there are enemy vehicles which to engage, it's not going to be an efficient choice and spending 160 points on an MMG, even a well-armored one, even a maneuverable one, doesn't feel good. Considering you could just get an MMG team 
for 50 points do the same job. The Puma is a vehicle that when it is fighting against other tanks and is in its ideal circumstance, it will go above and beyond. But there are going to be those matchups and there are going to be those turns when it has to engage a unit which is just not really suited to do so. One other small problem with the Puma is that it is a late war vehicle. It was produced between 1944 and 1945. This restricts its ability to be used in early and mid-war games. So you'll need to take that into account if you are playing scenarios based in those periods of World War II. Having said all that, I do believe the Puma is a good unit and I can definitely recommend it if you're thinking of picking one up. Not only does it allow you to get some decent armor saturation on the board, but fundamentally on its own, it can cover a lot of your anti-tank needs. Perhaps you take the Puma and you just use it as an AT unit and you can use your other units in your army to go after anti-infantry and high explosives. Maybe rather than thinking of the Puma and the Panzer III together, you could think of the Puma as your anti-tank vehicle and then take another light tank, let's say like a Panzer II Lux, which can be a bit cheaper and also start helping you get that high explosive and anti-infantry into your army. But of course, all of this is just like my opinion, man. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Do you like the Puma? Do you own one? And how has it performed for you? If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe to never miss an episode. Would you like to know more? If so, then please consider becoming a channel member or patron. By supporting the channel, not only will you be doing your part, but you'll also be helping me create more content for your viewing pleasure and unlocking a whole host of perks. You get everything from a badge next to your name, custom emojis, but the big one is access to the Mordian Glory Discord server, an online community with almost two and a half thousand active members. It's always popping off in the MG Discord. We've got channels for army lists, hobbying, tactics, stories, and even a pretty spicy meme section as well. For all you greenhorns that wanted to see the Mordian glory hole, today is your lucky day. And joking aside, I do want to say a massive thank you to all of the current channel members and patrons. You guys are amazing. Truly the lifeblood of the channel. I could not do Mordian glory full time without the incredible and generous support of my members so thank you guys so much and last but certainly not least i want to say a personal thank you to all of my top tier patreons these are the war masters and they have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty so a big shout out to bon bon vert mad larkin marcus roberts mark panconi rj scorpion swordfish trombone john stubbs nick walsh diesel fox and august varney thank you guys so much your incredible generosity is a massive part of how i'm able to do more Duke glory full time and it is a big driving force behind the channel but i hope you all enjoyed today's video thank you for watching and of course as always i'll see you guys next time